Hey, drag racing fan, look, let's go inside Foley Lewis Racing right now on Monday Morning Racer. <laughs> Monday morning racer here in the shop. Caught up with Doug Foley driving the Stutt Strutmasters.com Redline Oil Foley Lewis Racing Top Field Dragster. Well, look, man, dive in on your facility here in Mooresville, North Carolina. What's the square footage? What are you working with? And tell me about all the cars you got in here. It's more than the rail. Yeah, this is a, it's a small, you know, 2,500 square foot shop. Uh, it, it works well for us in, for, the, for the time being right now. Um, as you can see, we're getting a little crowded because uh, we've always been a sportsman family. We've always supported the sportsman ranks and, and, and done that type of racing. So um, we have a couple of S10s that we run in a footbrake class uh, for the most part. They do switch over to uh, Super Pro at times. And then we have a couple American dragsters 
that my oldest son Doug drives and um, in some of the big dollar bracket races and that where we work around our uh, typical work schedule we all have we all got jobs and um, so we have a couple of a couple of those cars we have a Malibu we're working on so um, we're big on the sportsman stuff that's that's always been something that'll stick with us whether we're Top fuel racing or A fuel racing or whatever we're doing, the sportsman stuff will always be there. It's something my kids enjoy, and uh, it's always something I've always enjoyed because that's where I started. All right, Doug, you're in Mooresville, North Carolina. That's not the Nitro hub, though. That's really Brownsburg, Indiana, west of Indianapolis, where so many of the Nitro teams have planted themselves to do this NHRA drag racing. So what are the advantages of Mooresville, but what also are the disadvantages for your team in Mooresville, North Carolina? The first three answers are weather, weather, and weather. <laughs> okay. I came out of New York, and I wasn't going colder. So that's the first thing. Um, I enjoy the, the season change here. We still get season changes. Yes, it's hot in the summertime, but overall, our weather is pretty nice nine months out of the year, and we enjoy that. So, um, but, I mean, you can't take away from the fact that, you know, they don't call this Race City USA for nothing, okay? And I am proud to say this is the fastest accelerating car in Race City USA, no matter what any of those NASCAR boys say, okay? It may be the smallest shop in town, but it's the fastest accelerating car. Um, it's just, it's a great area. It really was a, a, a different change of life for us, which was nice. Um, and uh, the expenses compared to where we came from in New York was a huge difference. Um, so I, I think to us it was that. And, and you know, if, if you're looking for technology and, 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 you know, people who are capability of doing machine shops and carbon work and all of that stuff, you know, People don't realize what's here because the NASCAR shops are a little bit more closed up, a little bit more confined. But when you start to reach out and get to know these people, there's a lot of stuff here available to even drag racers and some of the other motorsports uh, types of sanctioning bodies. Well, Doug, you got a nice little shop here situated in uh, Mooresville, North Carolina, where there's so many motorsports. But there's some huge shops in the area. There's also some huge shops in drag racing. Look, you've shared briefly with me what you hope to get to. Lay out the vision. Lay out the dream for Foley Lewis Racing and one day what you all hope to have doing NHRA drag racing. Well, I mean, our hope is to have, I wouldn't say as big as, you know, some of those shops that are out there. But more of a shop that's adequate as far as just time, effort, all of that stuff. You know, when we're working on this car and we need to go get another cylinder head, we need to walk outside, go get a cylinder head, bring into parts and then work on in here. So an eight hour day becomes a 12 hour day, just uh, facilitating some of that. So uh, we are looking at land now. Uh, I'm a real estate developer. That's what I do for a living. And uh, to possibly in the future put up a, maybe a 10,000 square foot shop, something that we can back the rig in or rigs if we ever got to that. Um, and be able to work on it on a more efficient scale. But um, hey, listen, I'm a guy that always started any of my businesses at zero dollars and worked from there. So I'm okay with this and I look at it, yeah, I could go spend whatever, three quarters of a million, a million dollars on building a building. Or I can put a little bit more effort by walking outside to the, to the truck and doing stuff like that and put some of that money towards the effort of growing the team and making it more of a valuable asset so that more, you know, strut masters and companies like that, more of those people come on board because they want to support a team that has all the right parts and pieces. At the end of the day, on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, nobody sees your shop, okay? It's about the quality of the product that you're dragging up there on Sunday morning. And that's where we really want to put our effort towards first. So you debuted back out after 10 years there at the Arizona Nationals. Had a pretty good run. You got strutmasters.com on the side of the car and on your chest there with that fine black and blue. Look, talk to me about Chip as a sponsor. We were talking about that before getting going, about how sponsors can be pretty grueling or demanding, but Chip seems to be an all right guy. Yeah, he's definitely, you know, one of a kind. He, he's a guy who he lays the cards on the table in the beginning of what he's looking to get out of it and how his company can benefit from it. Um, I was fortunate enough to get, you know, a, a company tour of his facility and see what they're trying to accomplish. And, um, you know, uh, it's, 
it, it's a pretty cool place. Um, so we understood it going forward, you know, going forward, what was our obligation to him and what we were going to do. I think what makes it different is just the connection. He is truly like talking to a friend or a father, or, and that's what makes it a little different, okay? You don't walk into those meetings nervous like you would be in a typical sponsor. It, it's more of a, a friend, and if, if you, he feels like he needs something to be different, you'll discuss that. Um, but it typically won't be a problem. And, um, but he, he's just a unique guy who just, you know, kind of like myself and Tim, he sponsors cars because he loves the sport, okay? And he finds guys like us who really need a help, who are in a 2,500 square foot shop and need that ability to grow. And that's who he is. And he does it because of the passion for the sport. And he feels like if he can bring something to the table that helps us move to the next level, he's accomplished what he wanted to do. And on our side, if we can help his company grow and be an asset to him, we've done our portion. We are still in these corona pandemic days. We've maintained social distancing <laughs> yeah. even while in the shop. Look, man, being an East Coast team, not being situated there in Brownsburg, Indiana, or the West Coast, and you look at what will possibly be the schedule starting in August for the NHRA, what's the plans for Foley Lewis Racing? It looks bad schedule-wise and for an East Coast team. What's up? It, it, it does. I mean, you know, we're still trying to – funnel through the rumors compared to the facts and some of that, you know, I had a conversation with pro yesterday trying to find out what is rumor, what is fact. And, you know, that's a great organization that's trying to protect us as racers. Um, and on the other side, as a racer, we do have to understand, we do have to, even though sometimes there's always that separation between racer and sanctioning body, we do have to help protect the sanctioning body to a certain point because if they're not here next year or the next year, what was the purpose of us preparing this team? Okay, so there has to be a balance. Um, you know, everybody's gotten a schedule that we think is not necessarily fully released yet, but we've gotten a schedule that plain and simple sucks <laughs> if you are, I mean, a North Carolina racer. It just is what it is. You know, going back to the question you asked about Brownsburg, it would have been a lot more accommodating to be in Brownsburg at this particular moment. We're not. It is what it is. Um, we had a deal with Chip and Strutmasters to represent mostly East Coast races. Okay. You know, Charlotte, Atlanta, um, uh, Richmond, Bristol, all of these races that would have been in our backyard and we could have, you know, um, and now all of those are gone. You know, and um, I feel bad for tracks like Richmond, who recently came back on the tour, you know, what, two, three years ago. He's put a lot of money into that place to really make it a great facility, and, uh, and he loses his race. So moving forward, I don't know the answer to that. Um, our goal overall as a team, me, my wife, my son, we've spoken, I've spoken to a couple crew members, is how do we move forward with a team that is very competitive and successful. That is more our goal now than, you know, and we would have learned through those races that I just mentioned. We would have learned and gained more knowledge through those. And we looked at this year as a two season year. We looked at the spring, okay, as let's get a tune up really figured out and kind of understand where we're at. How can we build as a team? And then take July and August off, which the schedule doesn't bode well for us North Carolina racers on a part-time schedule and then come back in the fall with hopefully implementing some of that stuff we learned in the spring. Well, we lost the spring. We've had more off seasons this season than I know what to do with. Um, so it almost accelerates. We have to make some serious decisions on our side here at Foley Lewis Racing. Now that we lost the spring, how do we try to be more aggressive into making this a competitive car for the fall and more towards next season. So I think uh, we're going to have to look towards that. Um, hey, listen, we have to look at the fact that we're, we're very fortunate people. Okay, we get to go racing for a living, and we whine a little bit about what races we missed. But in the grand scheme of things, there's people who lost their lives and families who have lost their, you know, whatever, their grandmother, their uncle, whoever. And, you know, our hearts go out to them. I mean, that, that's a serious stuff. So uh, we have to put that in perspective. We'll work through whatever we need to. Um, and we're going to prioritize those things that we need to feel like 
I think this year for Foley and Lewis is going to be maybe less races than we planned, but more work towards quality. So maybe some testing. We're looking at some, some scheduled events. One of the problems I run into, which some of the big teams don't run into, is the fact that my guys are, for the most part, they're all paid guys, but they have a full-time job. Okay? So even though we don't have the volunteer crew, they're all paid, we still look at the fact that can those guys, after all of this shenanigans with work schedules and all of that, can they get the time off for the schedule that we're going to lay out? So that's something that we're going to have to work on.